So this is a video um, discussing thermochemical equations. Uh, this is Miss Brooker. And what you're going to do is kind of talk you through um, the difference between exothermic and endothermic reactions according to a chemical reaction. Um, so we call them thermochemical equations because we are going to show heat now in a balanced chemical equation. So uh, instead of calling it heat, we will sometimes call it a delta H. Um, and with these thermochemical equations, we do need to include all states of matter. So with this video, what I'm going to show you is first an exothermic uh, chemical reaction. And then in the second, I'm going to show you endothermic. So chemists have devised a way of showing exothermic reactions in three different ways. And we have the same idea for endothermics. So each one of these is a way to represent an exothermic reaction. So as we've already talked about, exothermic reactions, you are releasing heat um, as the process goes on. Up until this point, we've only been changing the phase of state of matter, um, or we have been looking at heat transfer. Now we're actually going to look at a chemical reaction. Okay, so with exothermic reactions, always remember that we are talking about heat being released. And so when heat is released, we are going to list things as negative, but we're gonna show this in different ways. So the first way we're going to show an exothermic reaction is by putting the heat in the reaction itself. So this is calcium oxide reacting with water to produce calcium hydroxide. And you will see that the heat is listed here on the product side. So anytime you see a chemical reaction and heat is listed here on the product side, that is considered to be exothermic. Now do notice here, it is a positive sign. It is not negative in this equation because if you put it on the product side, that means you are releasing heat. Okay. So if it's on the product side, we know it means release. So it doesn't need to have that negative. The negative is just to tell us direction. The second way we could write this chemical reaction is instead of putting the heat in the equation, we could write a delta H over on the side. So same exact chemical reaction, same number. There's no difference here in the number, but what you see here is this is now a negative sign. So since it is a negative sign, that is what's telling us that this is an exothermic reaction. So we're always going to look at negatives as being exothermic, positives as being endothermic. Okay, so that is the second way we can see an exothermic reaction. So the third way we're going to see an exothermic reaction is with a graph. Okay, so we're going to draw a very simple graph here of this chemical reaction. And this graph is going to have heat on the y-axis. Okay, so we could label that as H or heat. And on the x-axis, we're going to have something called reaction progress. All that means is you're going from reactant to product. And R means reactant, P means product. So if I look at this chemical reaction, I'm going to use this chemical reaction as my example. I have these two reactants and they become this product. So in an exothermic reaction, I need to show that heat is being released. So the way we're going to show that is we're going to have reactants higher on this graph than the products. So that means I have more energy as a reactant than I do as a product. So my reactants in this equation are calcium oxide and water, and my product is calcium hydroxide. So the difference between the reactant and the product, okay, the difference between the reactant and the product is something called your delta H. 
So in this case, my delta H is going to be a negative quantity because this is an exothermic process. So what it means is when I take the reactants and make the product, there is a release of energy. So that means that the product is at a lower energy state than the reactant. So heat, again, as we know, is your energy. So we can say that um, delta H is the release of energy when you go through that process. So this is another way you could see an exothermic reaction.